Welcome to your invitation to join the Desire Grand Prix and my review of SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Geet's Magnum Boost Form. Ready? Fight! It's Morphin Time! Get ready for Boost! And Magnum! Hello, this is Sanat here, and welcome to my review of the SH Figure Arts Kamen Rider Geet's Magnum Boost Form. So this, of course, is the main writer of the current Kamen Rider series, Kamen Rider Geats. He is the star of the star of the stars, and this is the first figure arts release in the Geats lineup. Now, this was released in Japan in February of 2022. I picked up mine through an import site known as Ami Ami. There will be a U.S. release, but I'm not sure about other regions, so check where it's applicable. Now, this is a retail release in general, where the rest of the Geats figure arts line minus the upcoming entry form Geats, are P Bandai. So if you're wanting to get Buffa, Tycoon, and Nago, you're going to have to go through Premium Bandai. And Premium Bandai US did distribute those, so I'll be reviewing those roughly a month after the Japanese release, if you're keeping track at home. But of course, we do have Geats in his Magnum Boost form, uh, which is pretty cool. I am glad that at least one of these figures is retail, so that way he's a little bit easier to get. Um, but what's really cool here is we got a new packaging design for the Geats figure art specifically. It's got the colors of Magnum and Boost on it. I like the black banner. I do like that you can see the figure. Curious to see what the packaging is going to be like for the rest of the lineup since the rest will be premium Bandai. Uh, on the side here, we've got a profile image of Geats as well as Covenanter Geats Magnum Boost form. Uh, we got the DGP logo up here for the Desire Grand Prix. And then uh, on the side, we got the words. On the back here, we of course have images of Geats in various poses that he can do, and then an advertisement for Kamen Rider Buffa Zombie, who is coming out in June in Japan and July in the US. Uh, yeah, it's very obvious that Bandai's like, here, buy the first one for a lower price at retail, but then buy the rest at premium Bandai. Um, but that's, you yeah, know, that's a whole figure arts topic for another day that I've already covered. Now, cracking this guy open, he does have a separate instruction sheet. Um, for whatever reason, Figure Arts recently has started printing the instructions on the inside flaps. But because this figure features a form change gimmick, it's not just here's hands, it's here's how to disassemble the figure for the form change, and we'll go over that, of course, later in this video. Adding to that, here is uh, Geats himself in the tray. So you can see we've got the actual uh, Magnum Shooter 40X, which is pretty cool. He's got six hands, and we might as well just get him open and see if the Geats figure arts line is off to a good start. All right, so here we have Mr. Geats. Uh, so what's really cool is that, of course, you get sort of what is his base form, I think, legally, which is Magnum Boost. Now, in the show a lot, because of the nature of the DGP, Boost is a special power-up item. So he doesn't always have Boost. He usually just has Magnum, or he's using another buckle just because that's the luck of the draw in the game. Uh, but in terms of the actual design, it's good that we have the Boost legs with him, because uh, it would have sucked if we gotten like the entry form figure was just the blank on both uh, instead of having, you know, this could have just been Magnum blank and then the boost legs included with the entry. So I'm kind of glad that it's just here because then I can just kind of choose who will get the boost legs in the future. Because yes, there is a gimmick that allows you to swap the head parts, the chest, the belt, and the uh, actual legs to different figures, but only between the guys. Uh, I'm pretty sure Nago... It's not mentioned that she comes with any parts for swapping. Uh, Nago being a smaller build is going to be not compatible with this system, but Geats, Buffa, and Tycoon can swap armors between them, which I think is pretty cool. And we'll see how that works when we have Buffa in hand, but for now, we can take a look at what we got. So first things first, uh, the f I guess I'm going to go with something I don't like first. The color uh, paint they used for the Magnum parts here is kind of this pearlized finish, which gives it a nice look. But figure arts in the past that have had this kind of pearlized finish uh, tend to yellow on me. Uh, it's just because of the nature of the paint. I hope that Bandai going back to this, because I haven't seen it in a while, hope they're going back to it and they've actually corrected that yellowing problem. So I guess time will tell, because it took several years for that to happen. Um, and even not within sunlight, it's just them existing because uh, of the nature of the paint. Uh, in terms of the actual uh, boost legs, I'm glad it's not like a metallic, because I don't think metallic paints always work out, but you do have... The nice metallic paint for the exhausts here on the legs, which I think is perfect. But the actual reds is kind of a more matte color, which I think is fine. But it's still got a reflective finish to it. So it looks pretty good. Uh, in terms of the head, which the head, of course, is the important part here. Uh, you can see he's got the nice jawline. He's got, of course, the fox ear design that's worked into his helmet. 
Uh, I do really love the suit designs in Geats, and this is just one of the best ones. He also has the scarf. Now, the scarf does look sort of like it's faux, um, like faux leather slash like cloth, but it actually is plastic. It's just molded to look like cloth with the actual sculpted uh, folds in it. But I'm kind of glad it's plastic instead of a wired thing because those can always get a little bit messy. Um, but in general, really good. The Desire Driver here, of course, it does have the Magnum and Boost buckles. The buckles do remove. Uh, you can just pull them right off. They don't seem to be falling out easily like Seho Doubles Gaia Memories or the O Metals. Uh, these are pretty well plugged in, so you can't actually pull those off. The other cool part is you can do the revolve on because the belt does turn around. And much like in the show, the ID core is upside down this way. But if you want to have a more accurate, say we do get the uh, boost and magnum on the opposite, uh, you could actually, just to make it more accurate, you can swap them back and forth. The buckles work on either side. So whichever form you're doing, the buckles will be able to swap between them, which is pretty good. And then adding to that, you can also put the buckles on the side here uh, with the little like pegs in the holsters. So if you want to have them carry that or have them carry the boost buckle, even though the boost buckle is uh, only available in its open position, uh, you can have them carry that on the side there uh, if you want to give them the normal legs and then have the boost. So you got plenty of options. Um, I guess I should show that you can also store them on this hip, which is pretty awesome. So I like I like the compatibility with the uh, actual gimmick of the, the toy line working its way into the figure art, so that way your figure has the posing options, which is pretty great. Uh, and then adding to that, if you don't want the buckles on the sides of the belt, you can also equip his uh, sidearm weapon. It's got a, a peg there, and then that can go straight onto the buckle if you want to make sure he's got the Magnum Shooter but not have him posed using it. So that's pretty awesome as well. I guess also adding to the Magnum Shooter, he does come with it. Uh, a lot of uh, main rider figure arts in the past don't come with their main weapons, but we do get the Magnum Shooter. Now, the barrel doesn't extend into the rifle mode. If you want the rifle mode, you have to get the entry form figure. I don't need the rifle mode personally, um, so you get that. Now, of course, uh, just like the deluxe toy and just like in the show, if you take the Magnum buckle, you can plug it on. You can. I also plug the boost buckle here too, um, but the Magnum buckle can be plugged on to the actual gun to power it up. So you got the Magnum shooter with the buckle on it. And I like that that's all cross compatible. You don't have to have a bunch of different pieces because the buckles are a large enough gimmick item. It's not like the progress keys or the books or something where they're really tiny. These are big enough that you can actually just have them swap from there to the belts and to the holsters and all that, uh, which is pretty good. I like the functionality there. And again, they don't feel like they're gonna fall out, which is definitely a benefit. Now, in terms of articulation for this guy, it's pretty good because it's a figure art. Uh, they excel at articulation, so we got the ball joint neck at the top and then the bottom neck joint as well, so you can get all that motion. The shoulders move out, they move 360. The shoulder pads are on the uh, typical figure arts uh, ball hinge and swivel joint. These also pull in and out just a bit, so you get a little bit extra range. The bicep does turn, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. The uh, double joint elbow, doesn't do more than a single jointed elbow could because of the armor plating. Uh, the wrists move in and out and they pivot, they're on a ball joint. You've got the upper torso joint, the lower torso joint, hips that move out, hips that move forward, actually they move forward pretty far. They even go a little bit back and then you got a double joint knee, which moves pretty good. And then you've got a ankle that pivots inward, forward and back, as well as a toe joint. Let's talk about the bicep though, because that's been a point of contention online. I just discovered this while I was posing him, the actual exhausts uh, actually move. They uh, they pivot, so if you're wanting to do that like running pose that they do with the boost as the legs, those actually move, uh, which is really cool. So I've been seeing reports of breakage on the figure, and I'm happy to report I don't think it's anything but an ornamental piece here. So as you can see, as part of the design, uh, which is going to be tough because we're looking at black plastic and black plastic, there is this black strap-like design. There we go. We can get a better angle. So you can see this black strap-like design. It looks like it's holding the shoulder pad in place. The shoulder pad is still on the uh, ball joint hinge and swivel system we normally see with figure arts. Like you can see, it's completely posable on its own. Um, but you can actually see the strap here is a separate piece. Now, the bicep can turn against the strap, which you can start to see starts to push the strap out from where it's connected up here. So I think that for a couple people, because I did see a couple people from the Japanese side of the fandom, who got theirs and there was a split there. And I think it was from posing the figure either too roughly or moving the bicep too quickly. Cause as you can see, I'm able to do a 360 turn on it without it busting, 
but if I left it like that for too long, it might. So my recommendation is that uh, I wouldn't stress about it, but I would be cautious of it uh, when using the bicep swivel because it does, and also did see to leave a line uh, when I did that, it does leave a little bit of a line there. I would say if you're, you know, getting this figure and worried about breakage, just probably try to avoid using the bicep swivel if you can. It, you know, it move it carefully. It's a little bit of a fragility point on what is ultimately a very high-end collector figure. Um, so I, yeah, I would just be careful of that, but I wouldn't worry about it too much. So let's talk about his hand options. First of all, he's got these two open hands. He's got two fists, which is perfect for his arm-mounted guns, because just like in the series, the Magnum armor here actually has the little fold-out guns. They're really hard to get out of there, but once you do, now the little blasters uh, kind of reminds me of the Unicorn Gundam's beam sabers that it has in its arms. But these are tiny little blasters for Magnum to use. And you can see there that with the fists, it's perfectly uh, lined up for that. And I think it's pretty cool that they're worked into the arm like that. Not a missing feature whatsoever. Now he does come with these open hands and relaxed pose, which gives him kind of like one of those iconic poses where he's kind of casual, telling people to come at him kind of pose. And I think it works. Um, I like that they can kind of grip around the driver area. It's just a couple extra options for gesturing. Now, of course, he does have the grip hands with the trigger fingers for the Magnum Shooter, which also holds the buckles pretty good. So it's actually, you know, universal hand system for basically if he needs to hold anything, these are the best hands to use. And I like the look of that. I like the look of that quite a bit. So Kamen Rider figure art scaling has been weird lately. So how does Geats look with the other Reiwa main riders? As you can see here, Geats actually scales a little bit shorter than Kamen Rider Revi, and I thought he was gigantic, so it kind of feels like we're going back to the older scale here. He actually stands at about the same height as Kamen Rider Saber, which is kind of interesting. They're a little bit closer in scale than Revi is. And then Geats here is about a little bit taller than Zero One, so I think he's more in the Saber scale as opposed to the Revi scale, which is fine with me. So you can see the four Reiwa Riders here. Uh, their actual like heights from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet vary a little bit, but they do seem to be just running a little higher than the Heisei figure arts. So while he may run a little bit height difference to somebody like Gio or Deke, just a couple more Heisei examples, Seiho, non-Seiho, I think that overall Geats is good scale because when you have these guys posed on a shelf, they're going to look like they fit together in the same lineup. They're not too far off from each other. All right, so we're going to try out the disassembly feature to uh, have the form swap. So as we can see, the head part comes off, the eyes come off, and then the torso is its own piece. Then you actually remove the buckles. Um, that's talking about the Magnum. And then over here, you actually have to remove the scarf piece, uh, which is kind of interesting. So let's, let's test this out to see how this will go. So first of all, we're going to start with the head. The uh, eye lens piece. Oh, there, there. It, did it? Oh. Um, does it split from the back of the head? Yeah. Okay, so you see, this part came out kind of easy. This is the first time I'm doing this. I wanted to record my first attempt at this, just to see how it's good to go. And that way, if anyone's wondering if they should be careful with some of this, they should. Um, that, come on. It's interesting, because it actually splits straight down the middle of the head. Come on. I'm trying to get to evenly. Did anything break? Okay, nothing broke. Um, so this is one piece here. So this is one piece. Uh, you can see that the actual like outer part of it is a softer plastic with the inner part being more rigid. That probably helps with avoiding breakage. And then here is his eye lens, which you see this lines up to the eye lens there um, to line that all together. Okay, so we got that piece. We got this piece. Okay, so that's two pieces. And then apparently we also remove the uh, jaw piece here. So let's pop that off. Okay, so that's what it says. I don't think the back of the head comes off because I think that stays with the armor if I'm remembering from the show correctly. Of course, we're going to pull our buckles off because that's not coming with it. And I just dropped the Magnum buckle. I'll look for that later. Okay, so next thing, the back plate. So this plate, okay, that plate just pops right off scarf comes right out so i'm going to assume that that oh in the back this back neck piece comes out so i'm going to assume that just you know carries forward uh there's the copyright stamp that's neat um so i'm assuming that just every um top armor has a place to add his scarf and neck piece okay 
and then we're gonna pop them apart in the waist. Oh, that's actually pretty easy. Um, so without the belt on there, you can see that it just clicks into place, pops apart. That actually is pretty straightforward. So the legs, if you're swapping just legs, like if I wanted to keep Geats as Magnum, I could just leave all the head stuff together and then just kind of, that's actually pretty simple. I thought this would be a lot harder and it's not a ball joint, luckily it's a, like a, I don't know, it's kind of a unique joint system. Um, I'm just testing it for stability at this point. If you just want to like say, you know, have Geats with, you want know, to have Tycoon, for example, Tycoon with the boost legs, you can just pop this, switch it to Tycoon, plug the other legs into Geats and you're good to go. That actually works pretty good. Um, I'm actually pretty impressed. And then the driver is a separate piece. So there's the driver. Uh, I guess you gotta make sure you don't turn it upside down because there's that little dot that's supposed to be the switch to trigger the revolve. So there's that. But yeah, I'd say overall, I mean, that wasn't too painful. I think the, the hardest part is definitely doing the uh, mouth and eye part. So looking at this picture here of Ninja, you can see that Geet's Ninja still uses the white part of the back of the head. And there is no way to separate that part but the head does pop off on a pretty easy ball joint like it's supposed to be removable. So what I think is gonna be is that when we get like Tycoon, for example, he'll come with an extra head or you swap this head over to Ninja. But the thing is, is that the orange eye lenses are for Magnum. So you'd have to swap out the eye lenses, you know, underneath there to be red for uh, Ninja. But then the jaw piece, that is specific to Magnum and so then the green part for Ninja would go on, for example. That's my example, because I can actually get like a side shot of the helmet. So I think that, you know, when you put uh, Tycoon's head on here, you have to swap the mouth and the eye lenses. So the eye lenses and the mouth are what's going to swap between the riders. And then what you also have is on top of that, you have this going on. Now, interestingly, in the contents for Buffa and Tycoon, it mentions having Geet's head parts or Buffa head parts. I don't know what's going on with that exactly, but I guess we'll find out when the figures come out in a few months. But essentially, it does seem like the two parts you're swapping between riders is going to be the eye lenses and the mouse. Now, I do just ask the question, why didn't you just make a bunch of extra swappable heads Bandai? But maybe this keeps costs down, and at this point, I will take a cost down if it just takes a little bit more work to get this guy together. So in general, I thought this was going to be like a total nightmare to do, but honestly, they've made it super easy, barely an inconvenience, you could even say. And I like that you can actually like just kind of swap and plug these parts around. It will be more exciting with, of course, the other riders and have different armors. But even if you're just going at the, the base retail figures, if you're swapping like entry form legs onto Geats, it's going to be super, super, super easy because all you got to do is swap the belt or not even take the belt off, but just swap the legs. Um, so actually disassembling this guy to swap the forms feels, and I forgot that I got to pick up the Magnum. Um, it actually feels a lot simpler than something like the Seho O's figure arts that have form swapping or some other figure arts. This feels pretty straightforward and I think it's a good system to work off of. It'll just be yet to be seen how far this actually goes and if we're going to get all the buckles in a figure arts form. So in general, I think the Commodore Geats Magnum Boost form figure art is pretty good. Uh, considering he's a main rider at retail, they usually get really stripped down, and outside of missing that rifle mode of the Magnum shooter, he's not really missing anything for his base form. He's a complete package. And then he's enhanced if you get the other figure arts that have form swaps for him, and that's pretty cool too, because then that means there's more reasons to have them besides just, I want the characters. So I am glad that I've ordered Buffa, Tycoon, and Nago as well. So yeah, I do recommend this figure, and I also recommend subscribing and hitting the notification bell to keep up with future videos on this channel because I will be reviewing Buffa, Tycoon, and Nago, most likely, unless these reviews flop really hard. So to make sure they don't, hit the like button and leave a comment and tell me what you want to know about this figure that I may not have covered, or tell me something you like about Kamen Rider Geats. Also be sure to check me out here on this YouTube channel live Mondays at 5 p.m. Eastern talking about tokusatsu and many other topics including toys and Blu-rays and all kinds of stuff. Also check out my social media at Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at Soundout12. You can find my awesome graphic designer on Twitter at DarkClaw643 and you can find Hero Club at Hero-Club.com for tokusatsu news, interviews, and more. And until next time, this is Soundout saying goodbye.